President-elect Joe Biden says he's not concerned about his transition into the White House, but th some think he should be. A bipartisan group of former secretaries of Homeland Security say Donald Trump's delaying of that transition puts the country at risk. The group includes former Homeland Security Secretary Michael Chertoff. He served under President George W. Bush. He's now executive chairman of the Chertoff Group and joins us from Washington. Hi, Secretary. Good to see you. Thank you for making time. Uh, happy to be here, Vash. So Joe Biden, at least outwardly, is not saying that he's overly concerned about the delay in transition. But what is he not privy to because it's it's not official? Well, he's got an experienced team, and I'm sure he's doing everything he can to prepare himself. But what he is not getting, at least up to this point, are the classified briefings, which we have traditionally <clears throat> given to the incoming president-elect right after the election so that that person can acquaint themselves with the most current information about what threats are underway, what we are doing to respond to them, and what might be facing the new administration coming in. And normally, and correct me if this is if I'm wrong, but normally that would already be well underway. Like that information would already be in his and his team's hands. Correct. It would be there the next day. And I'm sure that's what Donald Trump got when he got elected, but he's not extending the same courtesy to his successor, but more importantly, by not allowing the incoming administration full access to what they are entitled to under law in a transition, you are basically playing with the lives and safety of the American people. Expand on that, if you could, Secretary, because that's the point that, in general, the thesis that you and your and, and your former colleagues are, are putting forward, right, that the country is being put at risk by delaying this process. How does that Correct. work? It's a very complicated world. We face a lot of different threats, geopolitical threats, cyber threats, <clears throat> terrorism threats, and, of course, obviously, the pandemic virus. And there's not a lot of time between now and January 20th. So the incoming team needs to have the ability <clears throat> to talk to people who are currently in office, to look at the classified information which gets them up to speed so they can begin to hit the ground running. When we transfer power from President Bush to President Obama, we had teams dedicated to facilitating the transition, the transmission of, of information. We even conducted a training exercise with the new administration coming in to acquaint them with what they would need to do. And that was important in terms of making sure in a dangerous world, we don't drop our guard when we have the handover of power. So the president has made the argument and his campaign team that they've launched all these legal challenges, there's recounts underway, and all of that has to be completed essentially before they're about to consider conceding. What, you, should they not wait for that? Should they be doing it earlier? Is that your argument? That position is nonsense. First of all, you know, they can bring whatever cases they want. None of them have succeeded. But starting the transition doesn't prejudice their ability to bring cases. What it does is it means that if you lose, which is what's going to happen, you're not putting the American people at risk. Essentially, what the outgoing administration is saying is we're angry because we lost, so we're going to hold the American people hostage. And I think that's inappropriate for anybody who considers themselves a public servant and takes the oath to, uh, to defend the Constitution. Why do you think more Republicans aren't saying that? I can't really speculate. I know recently, I think today, more have begun to say that the classified information has to be shared and that they're going to arrange to have it shared if the White House won't. Why they won't come out and say it more forcefully, I think, has to do with their internal political calculations, but it's nothing to be proud of. I wanted to also ask you about uh, something that there's been a lot of reporting on over the past few days since the uh, outcome of the election that has to do with your previous portfolio. That's the speculation, for example, that the heads of the CIA or the FBI could be, you know, next, quote unquote, on, on uh, Donald Trump, on, the, on President Trump's firing list. And there could be replacements for the interim until January. We saw what happened with the Secretary of Defense, for example. What is your take on that? Are there, are there wider implications for national security there, too? I don't know if this is just vindictiveness or revenge or a desire to reward loyalists by letting them have a title for two months. But here again, it's part of the same issue. Um, you cannot afford to have new people, untested people, distracted people in major national security roles at a time when our enemies are looking at us and think we're dropping our guard. And if 
if someone should wind up trying to take advantage of that, whether it be the Iranians or the North Koreans or somebody else, then it'll be this administration that has the responsibility for having allowed that to happen. And that, you know, that's a, that would be a very, very serious uh, betrayal of, again, the primary obligation of a government, which is to keep the people of this country safe. Have you ever seen anything like that? The speculation that, for example, the head of the CIA with just a few months left would be fired? I've never seen that. It's never happened to my knowledge in my lifetime. <clears throat> and the idea you're going to do this wholesale, again, strikes me as nothing more than vindictiveness. Before I let you go, Secretary Chertoff, I, I wonder, just looking ahead, putting, putting this whole matter aside for a moment into when Joe Biden does assume the presidency, what would you identify from your vantage point at, at this juncture as the biggest security threats his administration will face and have to tackle? Well, in the short term, obviously, the pandemic. And if we do have a vaccine, which we're hoping for, getting it distributed in a way that's effective and uh, as widespread as possible. I do think we're going to have continued challenges with terrorism. We've seen uh, jihadi terrorism in Europe, and we've seen domestic terrorism in the U.S. And there may well be some uh, domestic terrorist incidents that have to be dealt with. We have to worry about the Russians and other adversaries trying to take advantage of our being distracted, the Iranians as well. So there are a range of geopolitical issues, terrorism issues, cybersecurity issues, and all of them have to be dealt with simultaneously. You don't have the luxury of one at a time. If I could, just, w just one final question. If you were to assess the threat from, the security threat from China at this point, how would you describe it? I th I I'm less concerned about the Chinese carrying out attacks that would be destructive. I am concerned about continued theft of intellectual property, ever efforts to leverage their economic power in order to embed themselves in the infrastructure of the West, efforts to continue to use their economy to give them a geopolitical advantage. I mean, this is one of the big issues with Huawei and whether we can resist having them be essentially the sole supplier of critical infrastructure in 5G. So I'm not so much concerned about, about kinetic attacks, although you can't rule it out in the region. I'm more concerned with strategic advantages that they're trying to gain. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thank you, Secretary Chertoff. Pleasure to have you with us tonight. Good to be on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Michael Chertoff was, of course, Secretary of Homeland Security under former President George W. Bush. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.